Hello, yeah, welcome. Um, so now we'll be talking about a totally different type of data, newspapers. And so the main question which drives this presentation and this research is, newspapers are very large, lar lar large data sets, and how can we actually interrogate those collections more critically? How can we assess their representativeness and their biases in such uh, collections? And in this talk, I, I will first start with introducing my sources, which is um, the, the British Library newspaper collection and some additional uh, source, which is the press directories. Then I will go uh, and describe the methods we use for measuring bias and the representativeness. And le most importantly, we will try to tell like, why does this matter? How can, how can this kind of analysis actually guide and actually help historical research based on newspapers? And this work is kind of a follow on on a paper we published previously um, so if, if you want to have more feedback and more kind of background on, on this work, you can consult this paper, which is online now. So when people, so our data set is a British Library newspaper collection, which is now hosted on the website called uh, British Newspaper Archive. And it's, it's, it's huge. Like it, it, I think it's one of, arguably one of the biggest historical data sets available at the moment, um, if not the biggest. But like when people try to access this data, it's mostly like the, the main point of access is this kind of uh, portal, like a search portal. But in many ways, I think especially for historians, it's quite problematic because you can go quite deeply into your data, you can find something. But then it's quite difficult to say like, where am I? How am I situated within the broader framework of this data set? So newspaper collections, and this probably also counts for like other kind of like quite like data sets, like um, they're often like hybrid and they're kind of difficult to understand. So for example, here I'm showing each dot is like a newspaper and the digital collection is actually just a sample of, let's say, uh, of, of, of this newspaper landscape. And it's really hard to know which, which have been selected, what am I missing, um, what, what are the biases in this collection, what are the results of the selection process for my historical research. In this case, we kind of built on a concept of oligoptic data, like big data is oligoptic, oligoptic which is coined by, not by Robert Kitchen, and it's, Basically, it sends oligoptic sense in contrast to panoptic. Like panoptic is like the all, the, 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 the all encompassing view. But he kind of argues that big data is oligoptic, so it gives you a specific perspective on the past. But how can you actually kind of articulate or kind of detail this perspective? What, this, what perspective does this local newspaper actually give us? So the question we, we mainly try to address in this um, sec in, in this presentation is like how digitized is the um, 19th century press? Uh, how representative is a digitized press of 19th century um, um, society or of the 19th century press as, as a whole? And we will try to answer this question like by doing mainly two techniques. We can try to scan, like we try to understand what is present in our data, what is missing, and how the digital sample, again, the sample of digitized newspaper relates to the wider landscape. How does it relate to the press as a whole or to society? And we also try to contextualize uh, this newspaper collection, like enrich it with like relevant metadata which goes beyond the traditional metadata, which is in newspaper collections. So to do this, so both to kind of scan the landscape and kind of enrich the data, we used a source called newspaper press directories. And this was kind of the, it's, it's, it's published uh, from 1846 onwards almost annually. And it's like a very detailed source of all the newspapers that circulated in, in Britain. So for each newspaper, um, it kind of gives like a quite detailed description about basically like the title, um, the, how much the newspaper costed, like how expensive was it, what were its politics, how old was it. So it gives like quite a detailed profile about, about each newspaper. And this kind of allows us to both kind of get a sense like what, what were actually all the newspapers existing and also both to kind of describe the newspapers in, in, in a richer way. So basically what we did in, in, the, in the project, we, we, we kind of we spent quite some time digitizing those press directories which meant from going from this image to a structured version um, so we can then use this for our analysis. And this data is, is available uh, online now. So what we, we gathered around like 90,000 descriptions of, of newspapers between 1846 and 1920. So again, 90,000 of like these kind of small, like these kind of profiles of descriptions of newspapers. And we extracted the information from those descriptions like politics, price, place, and also did, did some other things like georeferencing and linking entries over time. And all this data is now available on the British Library repo. I think if you go there and you search for press directories, you should be able to find it. And this just gives you like an idea what, what this data looks like. Again, this is our press directories. So this kind of shows you the number of newspapers 
uh, by place, so the, the dot size indicates how many newspapers were, were published, and the color kind of gives you an uh, indication of its politics. So it kind of shows you the political geography of the Pitches Press for like for only for one year, and again, we have it for almost every year, so you could also do it over time, which I'm not showing here. But this just to give an idea of what actually is in this data. And then our other data source was actually the actual newspaper, the, the digitized newspaper corpus. Um, and in this plot, I show you the, the kind of the number of newspapers digitized, which is like the solid blue line. And then the kind of the dotted one is like the number of newspapers in the, in the press directories for each year. So it kind of shows you how much has been, has been digitized in relation to how much newspaper we assume there actually were at this time. And we kind of estimated around 20% of the titles now have been digitized for the, for the 19th century. And for the news to analyze the content, we have converted this, 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 the, the content of the newspapers to word counts for like initial kind of content exploration. And we linked all those word counts to the press directories. And we also will hopefully be releasing this data soon. So it's a kind of a Google engrams, but then for newspapers, but also Engr Google engrams are like metadata. So you can do like quite detailed queries, for example, how, how often did cheap liberal p papers uh, published in Kent mention the word worker, for example. And Again, the data is quite big, so it's like 150 billion words, and we have like around 300,000 observations, so it's quite a rich and large data set for newspapers. Um, so now about our methods, how do we measure bias? So we are mainly interested in like the political, uh, the, politi the, the political leaning of the newspaper, so we will be mostly talking about political bias. And we, may, we, we kind of investigate, like the, again, like the press directories for each newspaper show like a label, like is this newspaper a liberal or a cat, uh, conservative, neutral? And this plot shows you like the distribution of, of political labels for like in the press directories uh, for the whole kind of, uh, uh, like the whole 19th century. And actually there were like around 71 different labels, which was quite interesting. Like there were like, oh, new newspapers were often like quite new ones on how they profile their politics. Uh, we slightly simplified this so on the, on the uh, you're right, I guess. <laughs> you can see that we, we, can, we, we can have simplified this classification to kind of keep the main distinctions of political leaning. So we've been classifying newspapers either, either liberal, independent, neutral, conservative, radical, uh, and religious. So these are to kind of keep the main profiles, distinctions of political leaning. Um, so how then to measure bias? So again, we, we look basically at the distribution of those political labels. So we have the... Um, Basically, what we want to do is how, how much does this distribution of the digitized sample diverge from some other kind of distribution? Um, what do I m exactly mean with this? So we have like the, like the digitized press, and this has like, like kind of a, 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 like a label distribution. Here it's kind of shown as observed. For example, conservative is, is, is most present. And then we have kind of a hypothetical, like a, like a distribution we want to relate it to. For example, how, how does this observed um, distribution in the digitized press relate to the press as a, as a whole, how, how, to, to what extent do these distributions diverge or, or converge? So we basically, in the first instance, we look at representativeness, like is the, pre, is the digitized press a proportional match for like the press as a whole? Which we also like the press as a whole is also biased by certain like, let's say more affluent and more certain political orientations. So we also would like to, like to look at, assuming that we want, uh, that, that each like political, political leaning should be equally represented, like radical or like religious voices, how, how big would our bias then be? And just to give you a quick idea of how we then measure bias, so again we have like a distribution of political labels, the one in the digitized samples, and then we can see how, how does this distribution um, diverge, we use a spe specific measure like Jensen's Shannon divergence, to kind of see how, uh, how, how is, is, this is the dis distribution similar or different from the one for example, in the proportional sense, like are those two like proportionally similar? And then we kind of get a score, and the lower the score, the, the lower the bias, the higher the score, the, the, yeah, the higher the bias. For example, in this case, like the, the digital sample is proportionally similar to, um, to, 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 to the press landscape, but if you I want to have an equal di distribution, you would have, have a higher bias. So what are our insights? So what are our main kind of... Um, uh, takeaways from this uh, approach. So this shows you the, um, the, the the timeline for like political, the kind of the political, uh, the changes in the political le leanings in the, in the 19th century. Um, so proportionally, for example, like for example in 1846, like 40 percent of the press was conservative, and shows you, for example, like the the kind of, kind of decline of of dominance of, of the conservative press 
in, in the uh, in mid 19th century than actually like the liberal dominance until like at the end of the 19th century. It was actually interesting. There actually were two categories like neutral and independent, which are actually not very well known. So there's not not a lot of literature about it. But actually they were very present, and it's it's. Most point of time, they actually constitute like the biggest kind of, if you would take them together, they actually are the biggest group of newspapers in, um, in, in, in Britain. And this is quite interesting because they're, 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 they're very present, but actually they're not that well known. So once, uh, what we did then, so we can see how the, we can kind of plot a general change in politics over time based on the press directories. And then we can kind of compare how does actually our data sample relate to, to these uh, press directories. Again, this shows it's more in a, proportional sense. So the line with the um, triangle shows you the, the, the presence of newspapers in, in the directories and, the, and the, the dotted line shows you how, how present those newspapers were in our digitized sample, like in, in, the, in like the British newspaper archive. And as you see here, like, and I will come back to this, like the, the political newspapers tend to be overrepresented in, in, in the digitized press compared to the um, uh, like di directories. And then we can also kind of measure bias over time. So this is why we kind of see this as a kind of diagnostic tool to kind of get a sense like how biased is my, is my collection for a certain year, for example. And for example, in this sense, if you look at the line for proportional, the one with the triangles, you can see that the bias kind of shows a bit of a U curve. So it, it comes quite high at the 8050s, goes down, but actually, actually um, rises again later. So actually the, the, the further we go in time, the more biased our corpus becomes. Um, and again, for example, if, if you think like, if you want to compare your corpus with like, as I say, a corpus where each voice would be equally represented, bias jumps and actually doesn't decline that, it declines a bit, but doesn't decline that much over time. Just again, like, like a way of diagnosing what biases uh, could be uh, present in your corpus in the, in a, when looking at political leaning. And what drives these scores? So we also can compute which, which kind of labels contribute to the bias score over time. And then we kind of observe that the conservative press and the liberal press, uh, the, like actually the partisan press, is actually consistently overrepresented in our digitized corpus. And the neutral and independent press is, 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 is systematically underrepresented, which is quite interesting. And I, I, I will come back to this later because it kind of shows a bit how maybe academic or like research interests have maybe skewed the corpus in a certain way because from existing historical literature, it's, it's more said that for the, the Victorians really liked the, the neutral press, uh, the, the local press, which is the, also the neutral press. And actually, those papers which were quite popular and popular for Victorians actually weren't, weren't as present in our corpus. They were like systematically overrepresented. So there's a bit of a mismatch between what Victorians were supposedly like to read and what actually has been digitized. And we also ha had another look at the data. So if you don't look at if you, if you kind of change time, but now look at how this data, how does the bias change as a function of digitization time? Like if you add more data, so do these newspapers have been digitized at different points in time? Can we kind of see how the, how the bias changes as a function of digitization? Um, as the corpus grows, does it actually re re reduce the bias or increase it? Um, so basically we, we kind of did the same as, as before. We just, if we take like the first 200 newspaper, we kind of calculate the bias score. Then we take the first 400 and calculate the bias score. Just we get we get kind of sense how bias changes as the corpus grows, and th th this allows us to kind of see how, for example, for the equal representation vision, in this sense, like the bias didn't actually change very much, uh, adding thousand news newspapers to the corpus. Um, but again, what was most interesting for us? What actually? How was it actually related to to the um, the kind of political orientation of newspapers? So we did a bit more fine grain. So we, in this sort of like incremental, we kind of did a window based approach. So we get the first 200, we calculate the bias, and then we get like the, uh, the um, like from, from 100 to, to 300 and we calculate the bias. So you can get a window based approach for calculating how bias changes as, as you move along the corpus. And this was actually quite interesting because it kind of shows how different kind of digitization efforts had, seem to have different like results in, in terms of political bias. So the British newspaper archive is like a, a longer term of effort, which already started like in early 2000s with a, a digitization by a JISC. And then it was taken over by Gale, if, if I understand correctly. And, um, and, and these were like the initial efforts were actually more academic oriented. And then it was taken over by a company called Find My Past, which was more uh, targeted to, towards um, like family historians. 
And what we actually saw that in the initial kind of digitization efforts, there was like a high bias towards conservative and liberal newspapers. And then when, and again, this is like approximate, it's not, not like a clear cut timeline, but we can see that later on actually in the digitization when Feynman Pass took over, um, there, there was a higher, more tendency to, to, to kind of digitize the neutral or independent papers, actually like the, this digitization project that really had seemed to have different priorities in, 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 kind of the, in, in, in their, uh, in, in how they collected and digitized newspapers. Um, now turning to the last part of the presentation, we, all, we were also interested in um, analyzing the, the bias in the content of, of newspapers. So we were interested, interested in finding like which words are kind of liberal or, or conservative, like the, which, which had like a strong partisan kind of leaning. And to do, do this, I, I won't explain the method in, in detail, but we tried to find words with, which were discriminative ac across categories. So discriminative for liberal versus everything else, but also prevalent within a category. So they were used by many different liberal newspapers. And also the words are with the kind of persistent. So they, they are like persistently biased over the whole period to kind of um, get like a sense, like what are the main kind of partisan words in, 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 in newspaper data. Um, and we use some different methods, but I won't go into detail now about this. So th this shows, for example, the top 10 most liberal words that our method produced. And I found it quite nice because from all the like, I think there were like around a million words in the corpus. This was, this, this was scored as most liberal. And you can see like Tory, like the, the adversarial language re re speaks through this uh, word list. Like this is about we and they, like Tory were the opponents, the liberals were, were like describing their, their own party. We also grouped those words into categories to get a sense of what, what did those different types of newspapers speak m most about, which were like partly confirmed our intuition, but also showed some interesting new uh, um, um, insights. So for example, the religion was a very conservative topic, not, not surprisingly, but it was actually also very present in, in, in the liberal press, that, but they used different words to refer to religion. Um, and the, the liberal press was actually way more political, like they, they used more, they talked more about parliament and, and Westminster, like the, the high politics. And also when you look more closely at, at kind of the social words, um, the conservative press was clearly more, um, more towards, let's say, aristocracy, uh, while the, the liberal press really, really has like a whole, a whole different kind of social classification, talking about minors uh, and so on, working and, and workmen. So one last um, result I, I'd like to share. So we, we, this, these are like the most, these are the words we call partisans, so the, the antagonistic vocabulary about we and they, like this, this is like, the, it shows that Tory and Tories were the more liberal, most liberal words and radical, radicals were the more conservative words. And this shows this for like the whole 19th century. We can also plot this over time. For example, how, distinct, how distinctive is the word Tory for liberal newspapers at a certain point in time? And then what's actually interesting here that it kind of, the partisanship kind of changed over time. And we especially saw that in times when, when liberals were like more in power, like the, the conservative newspapers were more partisan and this kind of switched later in the 19th century where, where, where the, um, the, the conservatives were stronger actually and then the liberal newspapers were, were actually more partisan. So the, 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 the orange line shows you which kind of orange is for, is for liberal, which shows you which party was in power or which won the election. Perfect. And, it, um, and we, go, we were also looking at other topics, for example, ag agriculture, like this is, yeah, we know this is a conservative issue, but like conserv more conservative topic, but we can also now look at, look at it over time and then actually shows like a more kind of nuanced, nuanced kind of story that it, for a long time, when actually was, when Britain was very rural in, 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 in a sense, like both liberal and conservative newspaper, like, newspapers were equally uh, uh, occupied by agriculture and it only changed later in the 19th century. So to come to my conclusion, so we try to argue that big data is oligoptic, but then also try to articulate this kind of perspective. What, it's not just a panoptic view on the past, it's a specific, specific kind of uh, view. And can we kind of quantify this, this view in, 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 a, in an intelligent way? And we use this mostly as a diagnostic way of understanding uh, big historical data. And the main findings were that actually like the, the digitized press is actually way, way more partisan than we would expect the press to be. And, but also that different kind of news in digitization initiatives have, have kind of pushed this kind of bias in different directions over time. And yes, I think that I will keep it at this.